In this video, we're going to talk about access to tangent handles in a Fusion 360 form. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to get access to tangent handles in a form. So to get started in a new design, we're going to create a form, and in this case, we'll just use a box form. Doesn't really matter the size or shapes, go ahead and make something that you can play with. So access to tangent handles only happens in a very specific case. So there's a couple things that we need to make sure we understand. First, the only way that we can affect the tangency direction and amount on a form body is if we have a crease. So we're gonna start by double clicking the midline, go to modify and crease. Then I'm gonna use modify edit form and I'm gonna scale that crease out just so it's more apparent what we're doing. The next thing that we need to know is to access the tangent handles, we need to have the vertex selection mode turned on. As soon as we do that, you'll see that we now have these red lines with these green dots at the end. These are the tangency handles to help us change the curvature going into or out of that creased edge. Once again, these handles are only available when we're on vertex selection mode and if we have a creased edge. So as we pull these up, you can see that we're increasing the influence or the tangency amount, and we can change the direction, influencing the tangency direction. Now, if you've made a mistake and you don't like the changes, you can always click this chain link icon to put the tangency handle back to its original position. Now, it's important to note that without the crease, we have curvature continuity across edges. This means that there's no tangent handle up here that we can change. And that's because we don't have edge weighting in Fusion 360 forms. The edges are either curvature continuous or creased. So that way we have the ability to change it at a creased edge, but we don't really have the ability to affect it anywhere else. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips on things that I would suggest you do if you are planning on using these tangency handles. The first thing is just like with all designs is make sure that you make intentional changes. So you can see that I box selected all of these from the top, noting that we have a much longer design in this direction, and it's much shorter in this direction, what I would do is I would suggest that you use the scale option to scale it out in a single direction. You change your view, and here we're gonna scale it out in a single direction. Because we can't directly change things like the angle of all the handles as they enter or exit that edge, this is one great way that we can modify them in a uniform manner. We do have tools like modify match with the associative option. So you could make an extruded surface and you could use the associative match option. But again, keep in mind that there are tolerance issues that we run into there. Again, when we have these handles, we can use the reset option to uh, put them back. With all of them selected, we can also scale them up to increase their tangency or move them up depending on your selection. And once again, we don't have direct control over the angle of them. We can't specifically say that we want this handle at 10 degrees. If we're manually selecting one handle, we can modify things like the X and Y angle here, but you'll notice that it only rotates a single vertex. We can't select this as an edge. So really those numerical inputs are not affecting anything when we have a single one selected. Now, it's important to also talk a little bit about curvature continuity and curvature map analysis. So I'm gonna turn curvature map analysis on. I wanna talk just briefly about this. I will cover it in its own video because it is an important topic. But the curvature map analysis essentially gives us three options. We have the Gaussian, principal min, and principal max. With the Gaussian, we have positive change in curvature with warmer colors. So things like yellows and oranges. We have essentially flat or very little curvature in the green areas. And then we have negative curvature in areas that are cool colors, things like blues and purples. Now in this design, you can only see greens and yellows, but essentially what we need to do is we need to insert a couple of edges and get an inflection point where we go from concave to convex to see those cool colors. We'll do that in just a second. Next, we have principal minimum, and principal minimum is going to give us green where we meet the max limit, this value here, and red where we exceed it. When we talk about principal maximum, we have areas that are green going to meet the minimum limit, in this case, 25, 
and max are going to exceed it. The areas that are going to be red are going to be above that limit. So this is great if we want to say, hit a target radius of curvature. So in this case, if we wanted to have roughly 16 millimeters in this area, we can see where that transitions on the design. We can turn on high quality, which honestly doesn't make that much of a difference. It does help a little bit with some of the aliasing that happens on the corners, but it's not really gonna give us too drastic of a change. So when we have something like this, we wanna really think about what the changes are doing to our design. So where we're on edit form, if I select a single handle and I move it out in this direction, you can see what's happening is it's changing the radius of curvature and it's getting hotter here because we're essentially creating that tighter transition. As we get closer to flat, it goes to green. And we're not gonna get purple in this instance unless we add another, uh, another edge in here, which we'll do in just a second. With that, let's double click the creased edge, go to modify, insert edge. I'm gonna use single. I'm gonna use simple, and I'm gonna put it somewhere in between here and say okay. Remember when we use the simple insertion mode, that simple insertion mode is is only going to add a handle exactly in the middle of where we select it. So now we've got this flat face and then we definitely don't want that flat face. So I'm gonna to go to modify, edit form, make sure that I'm in the all and I wanna select the edge. And I'm gonna scale this in a little bit. We can do this in smooth display mode if you want. And I'm gonna double click that edge again. And you'll notice that it's giving us some very interesting curvature. And the reason that we're getting this very interesting curvature is because we affected the handle weight of all of these handles. And now if we reset those, you can see that it took away that tangency influence that we created, and now the handles are back to their original position. So now that we've created that extra edge and we've created what essentially is an inflection point where we're going from positive or these warm colors to negative in the cool colors, you can start to see where those purples are showing up, the purples and blues. So again, if we wanna manipulate these, we can move them around, but it's always a good idea to make these gradual changes. You don't wanna drastically take one vertex and just move it around because essentially you, you don't want to model in this method because when you go back to the box display, you always wanna make sure that you have consistent transition. So if that's the shape that you were looking for, then you would need to do that by inserting more edges. We don't wanna do it by uh, just simply pulling that down. To insert more edges, we'll just again, double click, modify, insert edge. This time I'm gonna use the exact insertion mode because I like the shape of it. I'm gonna put it at minus 0.5. And then now I can take this edge and I can scale it inward or outward depending on the, the design intent. We're gonna to go to the all option I can take this upper edge and pull it outward. And you can see now I'm starting to get that transition. And if we take a look at this in box display mode, that is the shape that I would expect to see. Still has some work to do in the corners, but I'm not gonna really dive into that in this video because the intent was to talk about the curvature analysis and those handles. You'll note that we can see the handles in box display mode, so I can still affect them here, but you'll notice that we don't see any change. And we don't see any change because those are only affecting the smooth display. So you need to use Alt and two or Alt and three. So either smooth display or that intermediate display that shows you the cage on the outside. For this example, I think that's as far as I wanna go. Uh, I don't generally use the handles going into and out of a creased edge. If I have a creased edge, I'll try to visually set the transition by scaling the edges out and not affecting the tangency handles. You can get into real trouble by using the tangency handles and, and starting to push and pull the influence in those edges, especially if you start adding more edges as you continue. Uh, then the curvature begins to become problematic and hard to fix. So I would caution against using them unless you have a very specific instance. Now, if you have something where you really want to get the transition into and out of that edge, once again, I suggest using just scaling the edges, putting in a controlling edge near where you want it, scaling those kind of globally or universally to get the transition that you're looking for. That's gonna give you much better geometry overall, and that's going to be a better final result downstream. 
Now, it's not to say you can't use the handles, of course, but just word of caution that it's it's going to be much more difficult to get clean surface geometry out of it by doing the handles in that method. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.